Today is the second Sunday of Lent. It is so, so called Transfiguration Sunday. Since today we have the Gospel of the Transfiguration of our blessed Lord Jesus Christ. The Masses during this week are as follows from Monday to Thursday. Mass will be offered in the morning at 8.30 a.m. On Friday in the evening, Mass will be offered at 5.45 p.m. in the evening, following by Lenten Sermon, Station of the Cross and Benediction. Mass on Saturday will be at 9 a.m. Next Sunday is the third Sunday of Lent. The Masses are the Yushi time at 7 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. Then this week, on Tuesday, February 23rd, we will meet again the Mary of Agreda Guild to read the next chapter in the book of the mystical city of God. We'll meet at 7 o'clock on Tuesday. Just notice that there's a little mistake in the bulletin regarding that. It is on Tuesday, February 23rd, not 22nd. Then in your charity, I ask you to pray for Mr. Jack Haggerty, who was admitted this week into the hospital after he suffered a fracture of his hip. And then during the week, there were some complications of breathing. Yesterday, he received the sacraments of extreme unction, last rites, and I ask you, for your prayers for him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Last Sunday, we spoke about the third sorrow of the Blessed Virgin Mary during our series of sermons about the seven sorrows of our Blessed Lady. And today we will meditate about the fourth sorrow of the Blessed Virgin Mary. But between the third sorrow of the Blessed Virgin Mary and the fourth sorrow of the Blessed Virgin Mary, there's a relapse of 21 years. after the Blessed Virgin Mary did with great pain and interior sufferings and anguish of soul search his, her son who was lost in the temple and found him. They went back to Jerusalem for 18 more years and our blessed Lord dedicated from his age 12 to his 30th year all this time again to the blessed Virgin Mary and St. Joseph, which is so called uh, his hidden life. Also remember as a side note, our Lord dedicated most of his life, namely 30 years of his life, not to the active life, not even to the apostolic life, the missionary life, but he dedicated the greatest portion of his life to contemplation and to instruct the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Joseph. And of course, this has a great application for our own spiritual life. And then when our Lord was 30 years old, he went in the temple. He went out in the desert for 40 days until he started his public ministry. 
And we definitely may assume, obviously, that the Blessed Virgin Mary took great interest in his public life. It is not, as some modern books may suggest, that the Blessed Virgin Mary didn't take any part in his public life. On the opposite, even sacred scripture indicates this, that our Blessed Lady accompanied him with some distance, of course, as it was due, but she definitely and certainly heard his wonderful lessons, his preaching and explaining of the mysteries of God. And then, when the debate, when the confrontation between the scribes and Pharisees and our Lord reached a climax which flowed into the blotting of his death, she took great part in it. During the Passion, beginning with the agony in the garden, which she knew, of course, by mystical experiences, the scourging at the pillar, the crowning with thorns, the condemnation, she knew it either physically or in a mystical way. She took great, great part in it as it was due as her vocation as the co-redemptrix, that she took part in the work of redemption. And that, of course, brings us to the third sorrow, the fourth station of the cross, when Jesus meets his beloved mother at the way of the cross. At the condemnation of Pontius Pilate, when he wanted to please not God, but the leaders of Israel, out of human respect, when he wanted to please the big crowd who will cry out on Good Friday, crucify him, crucify him. And the Blessed Mother did certainly hear of it, or was even present, definitely after the definite condemnation by Pontius Pilate, our blessed Lord begins his solemn procession of his passion. He takes up his cross, this cross for whom he longed so much. He embraced it, he kissed it, and he put it on his shoulders. And the Blessed Virgin Mary definitely observed all of that. And then she would go with St. John, who would accompany her, on a special spot in the streets of Jerusalem, whom she which she thought she, he, would, he could actually meet him. And so she was standing there with St. John and waiting for the procession to pass. She saw already from far the banners, the noises of the soldiers, the screams and the, and the cries and the noise of the people. And she thought our Lord would pass soon. And then she sees her son, the cross on his shoulders. Jesus meets 
his beloved mud. Who can express at that meeting the anguish of soul, the heart-renting pain, when the divine eyes of Jesus, her son, met the eyes of Mary at his fourth sorrow or the fourth station of the cross. The man of sorrows bruised and bleeding with the cross on his shoulders meets the mother of sorrows. There she stands on one of the corners of the streets of Jerusalem, the great procession of redemption is coming, is approaching, led by Jesus Christ with his heavy cross on his shoulders, bleeding from a thousand wounds since this cruel scourging at the pillar. And courageously as the strong woman, she walked through the crowds with outstretched arms. She embraces him and kisses him, his crowns of thorns touching her face. We do not read that they spoke to each other. But they looked at each other, the son to the mother and the mother to the son. And Jesus looks at his mother with eye full of pity as if he wished to say, Woman, now. Thy hour and my hour has come. Now be the strong woman, be the co-redemptrix to accomplish the work of redemption together with me. And Mary stands there with downcast eyes and she says, at least in tearily, what she always says, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be done to me according to thy word. Imagine what an anguish of soul for you redemption. What a heart-renting pain when she looks at these eyes and she realizes by looking at our Lord, these are the consequences of sin. And you and I attributed to his and her pain at this moment. You and I are and is the cause of this meeting. We are the cause of such anguish and such pain by our own personal sins. She looks at him with her motherly love, with the deepest sorrow, since a mother's sorrow is always the greatest sorrow. Mary, the mother of sorrow. At Bethlehem and at Nazareth, she had many joys, even she had many sorrows. But she used to hold this little infant Christ in her arms. With loving kisses, she covered his face. The most beautiful face of all the children of earth. And now she kisses his face, wounded by cruel thorns. The blessed hands of his infancy rested so often together with the hands of his mother. 
Today, on Good Friday, she sees them totally covered with wounds. with bloody streaks. His body, his sacred body, for years the object of your maternal care is cruelly bruised and lacerated from the scourging. Have this picture before your eyes at this fourth song. And she had always watched her son and guarded him as the apple of her eye. Just think of the flight into Egypt. But now he is no longer hers. She may not wipe away the cold sweat from his face or forehead or the blood from his face. She is not allowed to die for him even if she would be ready one thousand times. She cannot die with him although she will die mystically with him under the cross. But now she must look at him. She must stand by, think of the anguish of her soul Now, the prophecy of Simeon comes a, a touching, a heart-touching reality. Thy own soul a sword of, of, of sorrow shall pierce. Good Friday procession is now here. She, hear, she heard the crucify him. She must hear it. She was not allowed to see her son in, in the splendor of Tabor. But on Calvary, she must see him. A worm and not a man, as sacred scripture says. The mother of sorrows means the man of sorrows. The king of martyrs means the queen of martyrs. And what a meeting. The passion, the suffering was not forced upon our dear divine savior as he indicated himself in the gospel, no one takes my life from me, I lay it down out of my own will. But it was part of his vocation, part of his divine mission, the principal task of his life, the redemption of mankind, the reconciliation with the human race, and the Father in heaven. From the crib to the cross, Christ chose suffering for his inseparable com companion. Because there is nothing higher, nothing more sublime than suffering out of love for God. And if there would have been anything higher, he would have elected it. And this willingness to suffer is or should be a characteristic trait of all true friends and disciples of Christ. Ever since Christ chose the cross to save and sanctify the world, we call suffering and sickness and trials in the Christian languages crosses which God puts on our shoulders. But modern man contradicts 
and denies this principle that there is the necessity of trials. There is the necessity of suffering. There is the necessity of cross. And there is truly a connection between the suppression of the holy sacrifice of the Mass by the suppression of the Tridentine Mass, who is, which is a representation in the rites, a representation of the suffering, the new Mass, which suppresses almost all indications that the Holy Mass is a sacrifice, and the connection between this and the people unwilling, society unwilling to take upon themselves the crossings and tribulations of sufferings. Mothers, families who do not want to be any more mothers, who go for an abortion, parents who rather want to have a nice life than to take upon the cross of their God-given vocation of children. The entire euthanasia movement is an indication that man does not even accept suffering anymore. He doesn't understand and he doesn't want to understand the cross in life as a necessity. By means of our crosses, God wants to purify our heart and sanctify our soul. And we must understand this. It is crucial to understand. By the cross of Christ, he redeemed the world. And by means of our own crosses, which he sends us from time to time, he wants to save us, to redeem us. Not to have crosses, tribulations, sufferings, is not good for man. But therefore, we must learn how to carry well our crosses. And the Venerable Thomas Akempis explains this most beautiful in his book of the Imitation of Christ. He calls that special chapter explaining this lesson, the royal way of the cross. He says, Christ the King proceeds with his cross, we all do follow, walking in his footsteps, with our own cross on our shoulders. In this fourth sorrow of the Blessed Virgin Mary, or the fourth station of the cross, Mary teaches us this foremost and important lesson in the school of Christ. And what is our crosses, our tribulations, which will come from time to time to us, compared with hers? When we look at her, in the fourth station of the cross, when we look at this meeting, the meeting of these two eyes, Jesus and Mary, and as she stands there laid on under the cross on the height of Calvary, and she does so for your sake, she stands courageously, she suffers silently. 
the mother of sorrows and uh, the main of sorrows. And there is certainly more than one fourth station in the life of many of us. And if you not have re experienced yet, you definitely will during your life. When you follow the hearse in the cemetery, behind the coffin, wherein they have placed the person dearest to your heart, perhaps a dear mother, a loving father, maybe a child, a son, a daughter, Christian, go to the mother of sorrows. Tell her your tribulation, your cross, your suffering. She will understand best and learn from her how to carry your cross. Learn from her what it means, resignation to God's holy will, and don't try to rebel against God's holy will. Resignation of God's holy will in all conditions of your life. Even this crisis of the church has to be more seen with resignation in the permissions of God. Resign yourself to humiliations, to sufferings you can change, to every trial and cross that God sends you. And he sends you the crosses with the same intention as he sends you the graces. He loves you. Christ kissed his cross before he put it on his shoulders. And so did the Blessed Virgin Mary in an interior way. And so did all the saints. We should remember that we are followers of the crucified God. While it is easy to do the stations of the cross, it is very difficult to do the stations of the cross in your life. But it is necessary. The cross is necessary. Because by the cross, be it by the cross of Christ on Calvary, or be it by, the, by our personal crosses, we are redeemed. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Mater Dei, et Mater Veni, et Mater Gratia.